All right, folks, Tommy Cowd here. Here we are, my favorite nursery, because I grew up with these guys, trees, here at Greensboro Shrub Nursery, picking up some trees parked in here. And there's my man right there. We're gonna go pick out some river birches, dura heaps, and we got a couple of maples. We're gonna be putting them in for a good customer of mine. So, hey, hang tight, check it out, show you how to plant some trees. Quite an operation these boys have. I remember their father starting this nursery in the backyard with sandboxes. And uh, he, we were just little kids, like 10 years old, and he was off. Uh, took us out to these boxes. He had all these rooted cuttings. It looked like a ground cover, but it, uh, he started to pull them up and showed us that there was new fibrous roots on these little Burford Eye Hollies that he had millions of, not thousands of them rooted, and uh, that, that was uh, Hugh Creed. And I was fascinated by it back then. I mean, I was 10 years old, I'm 53 now, so I really, that was the first taste I ever had of the nursery business, was that. And as you can see what it is today, now you get to see some of their plant materials, quite impressive. All right, folks, here we are with my lovely daughter, Rio. Tommy Cowd here on the lawn, and uh, what we're doing is planting some trees. We got these maples going in, some river birches. Just picked them up from Greensboro Shrub. Basically, uh, using a rototiller to get our hole really big, deep. And then we are mixing in copious amounts of the soil conditioner. Now I want to talk a little bit about this hillside, and I've got some old videos of this, but this was all weeds, like brambles and crap like that, and I think uh, Grown Green, we came in and did some spraying on it, Look at the grass behind and it. then uh, we seeded this with clover, and rot, and those, you know, the lawn didn't even come to this point when we first seeded, this is the water saver blend, and Grown Green's just done the first treatment of the year, you can see the onion checking out. This is all beautiful tall fescue, beautiful daughter Rio, and uh, smoking, I wish she would quit that. Okay. But the clover came in, held the bank, and uh, as you can see, uh, we are putting these trees in, spaced about 25 feet apart. And uh, those are the Dura Heat River Birch, and then we got a couple of maples, we've got an October Glory. And then down there is a brand, uh, I believe that's a celebration. So, hey, we'll show you a little bit about this. I'm gonna have Rio film me. All right. So, as you can see, my dad's got the rototiller. Okay, we've got the rototiller in place. My dad is gonna go in a circular motion. dig a hole for a very big tree. In this Carolina clay. So we're done with the rototiller. Now we're just gonna dig out the dirt that we loosened up. Got anything to say, Dad? I would say just, it's a lot of fun. Words of wisdom. All right, let's, yeah, 
It's beautiful. We were expecting that red Carolina clay. These trees are going to love it. This is a really nice soil here. <laughs> so All right. We'll dig this hole and then we'll show you what to do next. All right, here we are again. We have dug the hole. Certain depth and we're looking at the width of the pot. So we're more than more than there on that. And Plenty of room. Goes, we need to be about right there. Perfect. Well, good. So, here, maybe even get a little lower shot of that. Could possibly go a little bit lower. Oh no, no, no! I think it, I think it'll be good. On the back side, I'm just gonna take a little bit more out. Yeah. Give those roots some room to breathe. And to stabilize the tree. Okay. Now, good old soil conditioner. So this clay, we just basically a little bit to mix in. Okay, that's good. About half the bag. Osmocote. Triple 14 sulfur coated urea. A little bit of that. Got some urea in it. Sulfur coated urea. It's got phosphorus, potassium, all the major nutrients. All right, now we're going to cut this baby loose and put her in the hole. Nice. All right, so we're cutting this open because... Because it's pot bound. It's, it's not really going to pop out. out of that pot. And then you'll see what we're going to do to these roots. Okay. It's out. All right, Reactive, me use your help. All right. All right, so now we're just mixing up some of this dirt. We got the tree out. Let's talk about this root bound pot bound plant as you can see it's been wrapping itself around in this pot for three years these trees come into greensboro shrub bare root from oregon and he grows them in these pots probably three years but you gotta stop this bound up it might look like i'm hurting it but i'm not i'm just Free in those roots. Bring those roots up so they'll stop spinning in the pot. Look at that. They will expand just like the tree. You want them to head out into that soil. So, scratching with this root system. Real important. Fun fact the branches of a tree mimic the roots. This is true. So, if you get the roots loosened up, and they're flowing freely, then so will your branches. That should be good. All right. Cut the tape and we'll, uh, Beautiful. Pop her in the hole. All right, we're about to pop her in the hole. Now we are beginning to fill in the hole. Well, my dad is. But Rio's been more help than you can imagine. Well, I did help with the other two trees, and we have two left. This is Tommy Appleseed over here. That's right. Planting trees. These are some beauties. 25 gallon material. Make a nice little tree well. Get a hold some water. Does the body good. Getting in touch with our true self, which is nature. That's right. So I'm gonna take that flat shovel and do a little grading. Make it look nice and pretty. There's no air pockets. 
That's important. When watering in, I assume, or just in general. Okay. All right. I'm gonna cut it. Oh, I'll cut it free. Oh. All right. We'll be right back <laughs> when we cut this tree open. You can see the beauty. All right, the revealing of the beautiful tree, the river birch. There she goes. How tall will these things get, Dad? These will go about 40 feet tall, full grown, 30 foot spread. The idea here is to really shade this entire hillside. And if you could real pan down to those woods, those woods are loaded with periwinkle and ferns and other uh, understory forest plants native and I'm thinking the idea is to bring some of those here migrate them into this field uh, and then this will be a no maintenance back hill you won't have to mow it anymore it'll just be left as a beautiful oasis area with really nice specimen trees all right look at that beautiful river birch Just got to get some tags off. Thanks for watching, you guys. Dad, do you have anything else to say? Not for now. All right. All right. All right, folks. End of the day. I'm going to show you this landscape. If you go back to some earlier videos where we installed this drainage issue with the torrential downpour here. Well, look how these boulders have come in. Those natchez, crepe myrtles, our burning bush. This turf, it's amazing how well it's performed. Little Linton roses and these coral bells that were planted. And I couldn't turn out this good if it wasn't for Sid, because he's an awesome guy. He knows how to take care of stuff. But here's the finished job. The trees, Ria's cleaning them up. Put in the three Batula Nigra. And a couple of red maples. And we're done. Now look at this lawn, man. This was some hard, terrible soil. Look how it is done on the Growing Green program. So, Rio, great job. I want to thank you so much for all your help. Thank you. All right, well, Tommy Cow from Growing Green and Outer Space Landscape signing out. And Rio just had a lot of fun here planting some trees. All right. Thank you, Sam. Awesome. Have a great one. You need some landscaping? You know where to call. Eight. Hey, it's Lawn Help, 866 Lawn Help. Do it. All right, growinggreen.com.